Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. The Wildcats drop a disappointing one, heartbreaker, whatever you want to call it, 42-35 to Iowa State on senior day to close out the regular season at what feels like a very disheartening 8-4. and Four, four losses this season for K-State, all by one score, and you know we're sitting here in the dark kind of right now. I'm sure there are a lot of Wildcats feeling like they're in the dark after that loss. There's it's tough to find the words to quantify and to kind of just say what <laughs> needs to be said there because the offense, I mean, you're going to point to a lot of things and say, man, maybe they could have been better here. They weren't as successful offensively as Iowa State. What gives? At the end of the day, it's it's an inexplicable game from the K-State defense, and there's really no other place to start than that. The game defied logic. Uh, Iowa State scored more points than they ran plays. Kansas State ran 67 more plays than the Cyclones and still lost by seven. Uh, they ran 102 plays total. Just, it's a wild stat, of course. Um, it, <laughs> I don't know, it's hard. Iowa State probably had eight good offensive plays, but six of them were touchdowns. So um, that was the story of the game. Kent State offense had some moments where it was less than good. Will Howard had an interception, probably could have thrown a couple more. At the end of the day, they probably still did enough to win. Um, it's an unfortunate the way that that kind of unfolded. It's a, it's a game that defies logic and it leaves you with a tough pill to swallow when trying to take everything into account of how this season unfolded because a win, um, no matter which way you get it, seems satisfying because you have a 9-3 year where you, you beat your two rivals, KU and Iowa State, and you were an eyelash away from maybe a 10-2 and or 11-1 season, but now you're looking at down the barrel of an 8-4 and four year and Oof, uh, and I guess the, the in the bad plays, the explosive plays that you allowed for Iowa State were such that it made you pull out your hair so much because it made no sense. I mean, you got the Will Lee, which looked like he gave a push to a an offensive player for Iowa State to run faster instead of just actually tackling him. You had the Jalen Noel. I think he had almost 150 yards after they catch one along the sideline where – it looks like it would be so easy just to push him out of bounds. So I, I think Chris Kleiman, the Kansas State roster, they're probably very frustrated with what the defensive performance was. Um, and I'm sure every fan is at this point too. Because, and I'll use the words that Austin Moore used, unacceptable. It 100% unacceptable. Unacceptable, embarrassing, pathetic. I Really... I don't think you can use enough negative words to quantify K-State's performance defensively in this game, and it's it's all 100% fair. I mean, look, sometimes I'm cr overly critical. Fans certainly are overly critical. We can all, you know, really embellish how how negative things are. That cannot be done for tonight's game because it, it truly was that putrid of a performance. And, and look, the, there's nobody that feels worse about it than that defense right now. They, they voiced it after the game. You could, you could tell just by every way, like, the loss is going – this one is going to weigh very heavy, probably heavier than any of the other losses this season. And there were some pretty disgusting ones in the, the heartbreaking department. It's unfortunate, and I know that they would agree – even if it's tough to hear, but there's not a way to overly criticize that defense performance. It was that bad. Yeah, and it's one of those that, I mean, even you give it a day, and I don't think tomorrow on the, the Sunday show, fan Drew and I are going to be, you know, be like, well, it, it wasn't that bad. Similar to the te like the Texas game, totally different deal, where it was like, you know what, actually, like, Props to them, you know they 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 put it together. There were things like, and that's that's the difference between this game and the other three losses this season for K State. Yeah, they they figured it out in those other games, and they gave each part of the ball an opportunity. And the same thing happened in Lawrence last week, and K State found a way to win. That just did not happen tonight. There was there was no adjustment, and they didn't find it, and it left K State hopeless. So. Uh, there's, you know, we, we can talk about the offensive performance. Ben Sennett had an awesome game uh, to go out in, in what was very likely his his final game at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Put together probably one of the, the better games we've seen from a K State tight end ever. He was well over 100 yards, had like eight or nine catches. It was an impressive night for, for Ben Sennett. Yeah, it broke a bunch of school records, and it'll probably be clouded by the fact that you didn't get the win if you're Sennett, if you're Kansas State. Um, you know, I thought some of the post-game stuff was a bit interesting. It, it surely seemed like 
you know, some of these guys had their minds made up and weren't going to convey it just yet. Probably thought it was too soon. Didn't want to do it, <coughs> excuse me, in this kind of moment. And I understand that. Um, but some of these guys, it sounded like it was their last time. You know, it felt like, I mean, everyone, and I hope they do, can go watch it for themselves, go listen to it for themselves. It obviously sounded a bit like this is probably it for Will Howard uh, in one way or another. And I think that was probably already assumed at this point. But a tough pill to swallow, um, a tough reaction afterwards. But it, it comes down to the Kent State offense wasn't pretty at times. But considering the conditions, and the offense probably had an advantage because of the conditions, quite honestly, and Will Howard alluded to that. But the offense wasn't pretty, wasn't spectacular, but it was probably good enough to where it should have won. You, you tell me before the game, Kansas State's going to score 35 points. I feel pretty good about it. Um, so, it, you know, we do this instant reaction stuff after every game. I think everyone but the Texas one because only I went and – they typically go for 15, 18 minutes longer. I think this one probably won't because it's pretty easy to describe it. The The defense played their worst ball game of the year by far. Um, probably the worst one under the Chris Kleiman era in general, yeah. uh, to be honest. I, I can't think of anything. Texas in 2020 maybe, but those are different circumstances, and this is just far more disappointing. Far more disappointing. And even and you give up 60, 69 points to Texas in 2020. Uh, 45 to Iowa State. Um, that's when your entire defense is depleted because it's the COVID year. Tonight, it gets the, uh, an offense that is below average to average. You couldn't stop giving up 60, 70 yard scores because you couldn't come close to tackling. Iowa State ran 35 plays and scored 42 points. I mean, that's it. I mean, uh, the the probably the biggest question people are going to have. I mean, how much of this? You've watched a lot of football in your time. I mean, how much of this can you put on Joe Klanderman, the defensive coordinator, and how much of it just comes down to the fact that he had he had players tonight that just couldn't execute for him? I mean, that's that that can be the answer sometimes. I mean, look, I think Joe Klanderman probably could have done a better job of having some guys in better positions and having the defense set and called a little bit better. But with the tackling performance, I'm not sure that he could have done anything tonight to guarantee K-State a win because the performance individually from the players was that poor. At the end of the day, the defense coordinator is responsible for what happened, so he does hold accountability just in general because of that, right? But there's not a defensive call in the world, multiple defense calls in the world, that's going to help a defensive coordinator rectify that kind of tackling performance. Um, when the players have shown over time that they're certainly capable of doing that. So I, I think sometimes we point the finger at coaches too much when things go wrong because sometimes it's like your players didn't show up. At the end of the day, the, that you know belongs on the coaches. But in terms of calls, stuff like that, they're, they're, you know, there's not anything he can do to call a play out here that's going to fix what they didn't do well, and that was tackle. I mean, um, and it's not like they don't know how to. It's not like the you know they're void of the fundamentals. They've shown for eleven games that they're capable of doing so. They just didn't do that tonight. Whether that's on the coaches for getting them ready or put you know I don't know. I mean sometimes your players just don't play well. In a lot of ways, probably a pretty poetic game for K State in a in a negative way. You think about the defense and what killed them in a lot of games this year, probably outside of the Oklahoma State game, but it was big plays. Missouri got big plays and key moments against K-State. Texas, same type of deal. And then obviously tonight, Iowa State. And, you know, it's even in the K-State wins we saw these problems. I mean, the the third and very long that Iowa State scored the touchdown on late in the game, very reminiscent of some of the plays that UCF scored on in Manhattan early in the year where K-State struggled in these situations that a defense should not typically struggle in. And, uh, you know, you, you can you can say that, you, hey, you got a lot of guys that – and experience this up at this level, but this is game number 12. That should not be happening for a team that seemed like they were better than the performance we saw tonight and, and pretty disappointing. All right, well, we can, just, we can move on from it because uh, there's only so many ways that you can say something was bad and terrible. Uh, looking at what went down for Will Howard after the game, during the game, um, what, what would you have to say just about what seems to be the, the final game that he's played in Manhattan? Uh, he was, it's, tonight was probably a bit like his career, uh, some great moments, some bad moments, and 
you don't really know how to quantify it afterwards because he probably did enough to win, but he also had mistakes that really cost you as well. He's, it was a complicated career. Um, a good person, um, a hard worker, a resilient person. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just like it's going to be a, a hard to quantify his career because of how complicated it was. But there were some incredibly low moments. There were some incredibly high moments. Um, at least in my time covering the team, which began in September 1st, 2017, there's hard to for me to find a more polarizing player. Yeah. Um, but I do wish him well because I do think it's over for him at Kansas State, which is probably his choice as well. Um, and he's been great in how he's treated others. So I don't wish – no one should wish him ill will. Um but he is responsible, or not responsible. He did play a key role in a Big 12 championship, and he played a key role in, in some things that didn't go well. So, again, just a complicated career, but a guy that should still be lauded for what he did well. People probably watched the Chris Kleiman post-game press conference, and if you haven't, I would implore you to go do so. Um, and you kind of alluded to it, just kind of some weird comments and vibes from the post-game press conference. Chris Kleiman ended it by by thanking the, the media and, you know, thank you for always being so good to me and kind and whatever. Very strange, and obviously this time of the year, people can start to, you know, break out the the cork boards and start theorizing what crazy thing is going to happen with the coaching carousel. I mean, is that is there anything that people should be worried about for how just kind of strange the end of Chris Kleiman's press conference was tonight? Yeah, you know, I think one, it's he is that's kind of his personality a little bit. You could leap to conclusions and think that that meant something deeper, but I will at least for now, even though I I, I do feel odd about it a little bit, but at least for now it just feels like maybe a guy that was to be honest, so pissed off and was trying to hide it so much that it, it was exaggerated the other way. Yeah, that that seems like the more likely outcome there. It's a guy that was incredibly frustrated. I mean, look, the, these coaches, they, they say, hey, respect to this guy, blah, 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 whatever. Chris Kleiman knows that his team is better than Iowa State. He knows that they should have won this game tonight. There are a lot of things that, that should have happened that did not happen, and I think that it just manifested in – He's not going to go up there. He's not the kind of guy that's just going to throw dudes under the bus. He'll say what needs to be said to motivate him, but you're done with your season, basically. You have the bowl game left, but the bowl games, while impactful and meaningful in certain ways, this is, you know, you're not going to go in there and just say, defense needs to do this, this, and this to make us better. It's going to be a totally different team by the time that you, you need all that to happen. So um, it's strange, probably something to monitor, but I think it's just a guy that – it felt pretty helpless, and just like a lot of people and a lot of things from this season, going to look back and just think about the what-ifs and the missed opportunities uh, because there were a lot of them this season for K-State. Eight and four and six and three, it's not horrible, and it's it's not like that's ever going to be you know bad to, to accomplish, but this team felt like there was the ability and chance to accomplish more this year. They easily could have won every game they didn't, and really there was only one win that they easily could have lost. So just tough to put into words. We'll try and do it all throughout the next week over on K-State Online where you can get Sunday show with myself, Drew, and Fan tomorrow. And then also on Monday, D.Y. and I will tie a bow on Iowa State. Look ahead to everything else going on. It'll be a busy week leading up to Sunday when K-State will figure out their bowl destination in the final game of the season. And maybe we'll start to get some decisions trickling out in the near future about seniors coming back or obviously you know different players like Will Howard that everybody will have their mind set on and whatever else might come up as K-State now waits about a month to play another football game so from Bill Snyder Family Stadium that's Derek Young I'm Mason Voth the Cats fall 42-35 finish the season at 8-4 and 6-3 in the Big 12 and that will do it for us here at K-State Online